we're going to go ahead and show you how to build a chain link gate. We're going to go through the math equation of figuring out how big to make your gate frame to fit that opening that you're looking for. Okay, so before we can get to building our gate, we have to do a little bit of math. What we need to do is we need to figure out how much we need to take off for our hinge and for our latch. Let's start with the hinge right there from here to here. That's going to be where the post sits and that's going to be where the edge of the gate frame is. That is two inches. Let's measure our latch. I'm just going to show you the importance of measuring your gate hardware. This latch right here measures two and a quarter. I know what you're thinking. What? Isn't standard two? You're right. Standard is two. So hinful fact, mm -hmm. if you are setting a gate opening for a pre-built gate, make sure to measure your hardware because that quarter inch could end up coming back to bite you in the butt. Our standard is two, so we're gonna go ahead and put down two inches for a latch. All right, so now, our cope. What is our cope? Our cope is gonna be on the horizontal pipe that meets up to the vertical pipe. We have to cope that piece of pipe so it sits together nice, also known as a saddle. So that cope is gonna be three eighths of an inch. So you're gonna have a three eighths of an inch cope here, and a three eighths of an inch cope there all the way up and down so the other factor is what size of pipe are we going to use well we're going to use inch and seven eighths pipe from post to post our gate opening is 48 inches wide so we need to figure out how wide we need to cut our horizontals and how long to cut our verticals because we we're going to make this to have barbed wire and we have we need two verticals at two inches less than the foot mark. So since it's a six foot tall gate with one foot of barbed wire, that's gonna be 84 inches tall. Subtract two inches, it's gonna be 82 inches tall. Inch and seven eighths, SS 40. Okay, so now we need to know for our three horizontals. So you have two inches for your hinge, two inches for your latch. So we got that, we got that. And then we have inch and seven eighths over here and inch and seven eighths here. The inch and seven eighths came from the diameter of the pipe because you're gonna join these two together. You have to subtract your vertical from it, but you also have to subtract that cope. So that cope is three eighths of an inch. So you want to take three eighths of an inch off of that inch and seven eighths. One and four eighths. Let's call that one and a half. Okay, so we want one and four eighths, also known as one and a half. So we are going to have two inches and inch and a half, two inches and inch and a half. Now let me just go ahead and get all this out of here. So let's go 48 inches minus four inches. Four inches because of our latch and our hinge, that gives us to 44. 44 minus, let's see here, inch and a half and inch and a half, that's three inches. That gives you 41 inches. So 41 inches is what our horizontals need to be. If you're at all doubting yourself, do the exact reverse math equation. So you take your 41 inches plus your four inches, do your inch and a half and your inch and a half, add three, that's gonna take you up to 48. Now let's go do it. So while Nolan cuts our last piece of pipe here, let's talk about let's talk about what you're using to cut this pipe. What is that thing? This is a Rothenberg Easy Cutter. It's a cold cut pipe cutter. You normally see them used in the electrical world. Electrical. Yeah, but they can conduit and things like that. They can nature. use you can use them in the fencing world. Yeah. Yeah. Greatest tool ever. Ta -da. 
what happens is the motor is actually down here. It's turning these two, you might call them drive wheels. Your cutter's right here. So your cutter comes down, that's what you put pressure on, and that's how you end up cutting your pipe in half, because eventually it works its way through. Ta-da! <laughs> he was an all-star in basketball. All right, so we were talking about the cope, the infamous cope. When you're wanting to take two pieces of pipe, sure you can, you have perfect contact there and perfect contact here, but right here and exactly on the opposite side of that, you don't have perfect contact, you're, you're further away. So what you need to do is you need to saddle it. Oh! So here is one that has been coped. It's been saddled, so it has that notch out of it. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna receive into that vertical pipe just as so which then allows nolan here to weld all the way around that that intersection nope not that one we want to go in this hole because it fits here and it just took a nice notch out of it this little chomper right here is on a cam so as it spins back down it presses it into that pipe taking a notch out of it so we're gonna line that back up with this, this line and this line, the existing cope. And we're gonna wait for it to come back up and it just bit it and it gave us a cope on each side. Now that we did that, we are going to gently, we're not gonna push it all the way in yet. We're gonna look at it on my end. So I can look down my cope, make sure it's going up and down. I'm gonna push in the pipe in there and it just bit it and took the took the chomper out, took a bite out of the pipe. So now I'm gonna line up with those lines again, shove in there, and it bit it yet again. And that is how we cope with the notcher. So this falls in the category of not only will this kill you, but it'll hurt the whole time you're dying. So that's what kind of category this, this falls in. And yes, it does have some serious pinch points, so beware. Starting from the smallest to the biggest, uh, so you can go from a quarter, three eighths, half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two. So the biggest you can do on this is you can do a two and three eighths cope. Um, now one other thing about this is you can do 110 or 220. We tried to set it up on 110, but unfortunately we had to convert to 220 single phase because the 110 wasn't strong enough to actually cope the SS40 pipe. Knowing that if you're into getting one of these and you get one, set it up for 220 if you're gonna be coping um, SS40 pipe. Do you ever have a day where you just can't cope? Not with this thing, you can cope all the time. This is a jig table, so. It looks like this, they're gonna hurt me. Yeah, they tend to if you get an elbow on them. <laughs> But Owie. we build multiple gates on this table, so um, these are all just jigs that makes makes me more efficient. You just slide your pipe up against your jig, then I can tack that. So could I could I stand up on the table and, and do, do a jig? And do a jig? I wouldn't do a jig on this table. It's got a lot of spiky things sticking out of it. <laughs> well, we're putting on our bulldog collar so you can't lift the gate off its office hinges you know if it was like a double drive gate your bulldog hinges are supposed to sit beneath and on top of so you can't lift that gate up yep makes it a secure gate secure you know on the back side you got some stuff going on like back here yep these are these are different measurements for the bulldog collars themselves it's depending on your gate size obviously this is an eight foot gate because it has barbed wire on the top um but it would be considered a six foot gate so this would be the six foot mark for where we would line our collar up all the gates the bottom measurement is always the same all right so bottom always stays the same and i put yep. my bottom one there yep and then i'm assuming i just put the pipe in right there up yep. against these ones mm -hmm. yeah this is a handy jig i do my outside two first obviously and i'll weld my lower collar on and my upper collar and then I'll find center and make sure that I'm lined up center. I'll measure on the inside of the pipe to center of this pipe. 
and I'll do the same on the top. <laughs> Since you're using a jig, do we need to do we need to like check it for square? It's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. That is actually the next step. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just jumping ahead of the. 75 and 316. 75 and 316. Woohoo! Now what? We weld. Weld her up. Nolan here has welded up our gate. If you remember, when we very first started that math equation, we started off with a 48 inch gate and we had to take two inches off for the latch and two inches off for the hinges. From the outside of vertical to the outside of vertical, that measurement based on that equation needs to be 44 inches. Here's the moment of truth. It's like, it's like not even like a 16th off. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dead nuts 44. Dead nuts 44. But what do we have to do to your welds? Oh, admire them. Admire them. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. Maybe we should put some paint on it. Yeah, paint. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? It's going to rust. And then it's going to be ugly. This beautiful weld is going to be ugly. Galve piping is just hot dip carbon. Yep. So when you weld it, it burns the galve off and then it's just carbon. So it's just exposed steel. And that's why it rusts. Galve Pro. Galve Pro. <laughs> Without any further ado, it's been a while since I've used that. Hopefully we taught you guys something new about how to figure out your math equation and how to weld up a gate frame. You saw it all here on SWI YouTube channel where we are. Wyoming Spencer Gate Company, and you have a good ding day. -day.